at one point thought maybe we would just have them take it down, we'll clean it all up, take all this rock back to the company and get the right stuff. Well, it has been raining, I think all night and all morning, um, but this is the final day, day four of the masonry heater build. Uh, Patrick and his, um, his boys have been doing an awesome job, such hard workers. You guys can see just how much they've got done in the short amount of time. It looks amazing. So I'm gonna go in there and show you guys what we're, um, where we're at at this point. And then I'm gonna let Patrick talk to you guys about what we're doing today. Well, you can see, it's just a rainy, gloomy day. I think it's gonna clear up later and probably get really humid on this. Patrick, you ready for some Oklahoma humidity? I think so. <laughs> I think it's coming. <laughs> so what we got going on today? Well, I think today we're gonna start, if not finish, we'll see where we get. Mm -hmm. Stone depends on how it lays out. Some stones lay in quickly, some stones take a lot of fitting, and, and there's nothing real straightforward on this. It's full of corners, okay. arches, uh, openings, things to go around. So there's a lot of cuts to make on the stone. But we're gonna see how far we get on that today. We've got the, the chimney installed, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's neat. Um, our part anyway, then yeah. when it goes up top, that's a telescoping part that goes up mm -hmm. and it will fit into the chimney that goes through the roof. Um, that's gonna be a cool day. It'll, it'll be, it'll look really neat when we get done. If we get totally done or wherever we yeah. get, it's gonna be. I already think it looks sweet. neat right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Hey, so we might get, a, yeah, I think it was awesome. So we might get a question, can you just leave it like that? And you explain to me it has to be a certain thickness. Yes, so you have to have, you gotta have four inches of thickness on there. And that's because for the clearances that we have to the wall, uh, we talked about it earlier that ASTM E1602 code requires a certain wall thickness in order to have, that's what, that's what gives us the, the clearance from the wall that we do have. So if you, if you reduce that wall thickness, then you lose that clearance and you have to have three feet in all directions uh, from a combustible surface. Okay. So, so yeah, you've got to clad it, you've got to make it four inches thick. This is going to be four plus, you've got some nice thick stone up there, yeah. probably four, four and a half, which is great. Because we're shooting for four to five. Okay. Minimum of four, up to five. Yeah. You know, even a little beyond five, but then you're going to have to, your surface temp lowers, or you maybe need to burn a little bit more yeah. wood. You'll store a little more heat, but it takes a little more wood to get it up there. So gotcha. four to five is the, is the sweet spot. Now what about behind it? Um, behind the stove where we're not putting in the, the rock? Yep. So what's the clearance on that part? Same, because what we did there was, uh, so we did a two and a half inch thick stone on the three sides. We did a three and a half inch So you did stone. a bigger, you were anticipating we did a that. stone, and we slugged it with a half inch of mud like the rest. Okay, awesome. So, so it's a full four. Perfect. Yep. I knew, I knew someone was gonna hit me with that question. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember those, those uh, the back stones were thicker. Yes, and heavier. bigger, heavier, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so, yep. Okay, so that's this is what they've got done in three days. I think is absolutely amazing how quick They've got they've got this done. Um, on a normal build, if you you know you get you, you brought this with you as a new prototype, how long would it take you to get to this point on your regular build? Normally, this is going to take anywhere from a week and a half to two weeks for me to get to this point. Yeah, yeah, because it's just it's a lot of monkeying around. The bench adds quite a bit of time, and um, but it's just you know the layout of the brick you. This is what you would normally do if you're gonna clad this in thin stone veneer, but you would most likely need a brick layer to get that brick up there. Mm -hmm. Most people, it's, it's just too much. You know, yeah. brick bonds to a certain dimension, but when you turn it on its edge, and which is what you'd have to do if you were doing a thin stone veneer, uh, it just, the bond changes because now you go from a, a four by eight to a two and a half okay. by eight, and that changes the bond. So this is a pretty much a game changer for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for us, if, yeah. if we can streamline this, it's gonna be a game changer that's for awesome. anybody that wants to build one of these, but it's that's a little ways down the road. But for us right now, it's a really cool prototype. Yeah, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. So um, you can see this is where we're at. We're ready to start putting some rock on there. 
and uh, we'll see where we get today. So I'll bring you guys along and show you guys the process. We'll film as much as possible. We actually have a time lapse. Um, right over the, oh, you need to set your time lapse up too yep, yep, before you get in trouble. <laughs> So we'll have time lapse on all of this and it's going to be awesome. I really hope you guys are enjoying this series. Um, it's been such a great experience. If you guys are interested in this at all, go to the website, tempcast.com, um, and you can get all the inf information there, the contacts, all that. Mistake. We forgot to cut the air slot out that I was intending to do before we set that stone. So I've got an oscillator. We're just going to cut that slot now. And that slot is for, it allows the heater to kind of draw the cold air off the floor and it puts it behind the heater. It'll heat up and come out the top. So it just, it, it uh, I guess, produces that natural it. convection. Of, you have to do both sides or just one? We're going to do both sides. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Okay, you guys can see Patrick has started laying the pattern out, going around the edges, just getting things lined up to start applying the mud and uh, stick it to the concrete or cement, whatever you want to call that. Patrick, you starting right there? I'm going to start right here. Okay. Yep. We got a, enough pieces laid out here. Um, get much higher and you, you'll start to lose track <laughs> of what you did. So, yeah, we'll just stick them on and then. Um, Lay more out dry and or just keep going. So right. yeah. that's it. Oh, there's it, huh? That's it. Let's take you'll you'll be done by noon, I think. Right. As quick as you guys are noon. Do the noon. Think away. Did I say midnight or noon? Do that by twelve. Yeah, you done by twelve. Either way, it's 12, right? <laughs> <laughs> So it just makes it easier on you to lay it out first so you can turn it out, turn around, picking all the patterns that you already got one set, yeah. it goes quicker, right? And it's more like the, the beginning of the day here too. Yeah. Um, why mix mud that's just gonna sit there? True. So get as much laid out as you can and then, then you use up a bunch of mud right away. Gotcha, it makes sense. Yeah. Specialized mortar for this very application. Yeah. Um, it's more like a modified fin set, like for tile. It's got fiber in there to uh, reinforce it. And it's got a lot of flexural properties to it, so that I mean, you don't think of like 
mortar and concrete is able to flex and bend, you think it would break, but uh, this it does have some flexing wow. ability without breaking. So. Okay, so Patrick has been busting his butt all day. And you can see they're almost halfway done. We're up to the door right here. And what are you gonna what are you gonna try to attempt to make here? Uh, we're gonna cut a keystone out of one You're of gonna the make rocks a keystone. in your yard. So that sounds awesome to me. We'll give it a shot. We'll see what it looks like. <laughs> a lot less of a wedge than I was thinking it would be. So we'll cut and see what it looks like. That was crazy. That's really hard material. <laughs> yeah, the, it cut through the other stuff like butter, didn't it? Compared yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of quartzy. Really? Yeah. You want to take some home with you? Get a little truckload of it? No, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I got the bobcat. We can load the trailer down. <laughs> Look like up there. Chip that away a little bit.
see that, Randy? I pulled the camera out and they come running, running over here. Uh -huh. Pat, I pulled my camera out to record the dogs. And they, they know every time. They want camera time. So this is looking awesome. Um, we ran into a, a dilemma and we haven't talked about it on video. We talked about it on the live stream. You want to tell them real quick what, what the dilemma ran into at the rock? We haven't explained yeah. that on them. So yeah. Pat's going to tell you the problem we had. Yeah, so the plan was to do a dry stack. And if you're gonna do a dry stack, you want the joints tight. And so we had planned for this and the, we were sold a product that was supposed to be, you know, 16th inch tolerance. And that's acceptable, you know, for a yeah. dry stack stone. Um, we got these ones in <clears throat> literally a two inch, so we have two inches and three inch heights. The two inch heights are anywhere from just over one and three quarter and as, and as much as two and three eighths. So we have more than five eighths of an inch in the same stone. That's huge. And so we have to cut every stone at least three times, mm -hmm. every stone. So we've got to, because the, they didn't come square either. So you guys have been sitting here all day long. Cutting all that. Just cutting these square. Yep. Because they were supposed to be square to start with, they all, they all come looking like that. And we had, so yeah, that just had, we had to no be squared clear. off. So it's gotta be squared off and then, so on both ends it's gotta be squared off and then it's gotta be trimmed to height, oftentimes, or cut to length. And so we're just so about we're a walking one, down. About a one, <laughs> maybe one a day half job yeah. has now turned into probably a three day job. Probably, Yeah. two and a half at least. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna have yesterday and today and do it for sure and maybe wrap up another half a day. But you know what, I know it's a lot of work for you, but you've made this look amazing. It's gonna look good. It's looking awesome. It's gonna look fantastic. You're gonna love it. I mean, I already it's did. not exactly what you had imagined, I, but it's, We talked about, I like it better yeah, than what we imagined. Yeah, it's a little more rustical than what yes, we're thinking. Yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You wanna tell them about this right here? Sure, yeah. Well, we just pulled this, we pulled a boulder out of your yard and then uh, just cut it as a keystone to go into this arch over the door. Looks pretty good. I, I like it. Came it. Out pretty nice. I didn't know if Brandy would like it because it's a little bit brighter. But she's like, no, that looks awesome. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so Pat made that. And I showed you guys in this video him cutting this out. That's what he was doing. He was uh, making that keystone. Yeah. So I'll let you get back to so, work. It's coming. Yep, good thing. Good job. Yeah, so like I showed you guys probably Randy cutting some. Me and Randy have been jumping on the saw and we have been squaring all these up. And it's actually, hey, Patrick, it's actually sped the process up quite a bit, hadn't it? A lot. It's like like cutting them. <laughs> Crazy. It's really nice. Crazy. Yeah. So um, we've been squaring these all up for Patrick and he has really got it on the ball. I like this. I really do. I like this better than what we've seen on display. And I honestly, they, so the place we got it from, they know what they're doing. They, they, this is what they do for a living is sell stone. So they knew they sent out the wrong product to us because we literally showed them the display, had very long conversations several different days, and then we find a place to order and they they completely did not cut this the way they were supposed to so it's working out awesome because pat has the patience to do this and he and he's like an artist in his brain he's figuring it all out um, but it just made so much more work on him that wasn't necessary um, so it makes us feel bad that all the hard work he has to do when it didn't have to be done like that only if someone of uh, the other company would have done their job um, so i'm probably gonna have to call and tell them um, hey you guys are send, sending product out. You need to make sure it's right. And as land, and as homeowners, we is our, our probably our responsibility also to check it. But we kind of like talked to this guy a lot and kind of entrusted him and and all this. And then to find out that they did this to us is really discouraging. Um, so yeah, it's just one of them things. Check your product before you take it. And uh, that's my fault too. Uh, I'm not putting all the blame on me. I'm passing the buck on to on the people who actually cut it that do this for a living. They know. Um, we went in there and, and trusted them and, and got that, but Patrick is making the best of it and it's, I think it's going to look even better than what we imagined it was going to be. I'm so excited. He's, he's getting close. He's getting close to getting done. It's gonna, he's going to work late tonight and there's very little I can do for him other than cut these. Me and Randy have been cutting these rocks, um, squaring them up for him. Other than that, he's really the only one that can sit there and place it on there because he's figuring out all the heights and stuff and has to strip them and stuff. So it's been, it's been a lot longer, bigger process. Um, than we first imagined. When Brandy gets here, we'll talk a little bit about to her because we, at one point, thought maybe we would just have them take it down, we clean it all up, take all this rock back to the company and get the right stuff, and then later in the future, finish the face of it. Um, but after looking at it, I was like, I like it better the way it is. So 
It's one of them deals. And Hadley has been doing an awesome job helping us. Thank you, Hadley. Hope helped us this morning, but I didn't get to pull the camera out yet. Um, so Hadley's been moving the rocks over there for us. And we cut them, she takes them back in there. She's just been a really good help. Thank you, Hadley. Okay, so we are back. It is Monday. Um, Patrick has stayed to finish this or get as far. We don't know how, how it's gonna go today. We're just, he's working and we're gonna see what happens. We're optimistic, but he has been working his butt off. He has worked on this arch right here. I'm gonna let him explain to you guys what he's got going on. A little easier to see when it's done, but we're okay. gonna try to step up the arch. So these are, these are tricky, it's a tricky arch just because you've got these returns and everything has to be tapered at an angle yeah. in order to fit in there nice. So, so you've been working on cutting them. A dry stack is difficult to do with this. So uh, what we want to do is be able to go up two courses and run into this. <coughs> and in the running in of it, we're going to cut these off as well so that we run in there straight and then the next one steps up. And so there's going to be kind of a step oh, pattern gotcha. as we go around that. And so, um, so that's the plan. We'll see what happens. This is a pretty time consuming it arch. It is, it is. It'll take a couple hours. Yeah, just for the arch. This. Yeah, because of all the cuts and then some of the cuts won't work. Yeah. And then you got to redo them. And, yep. So it's, uh, you know, and then we're going to continue to alternate our bond a little bit. You know, we've got a bunch of twos getting up to here. We got twos and threes. We're going to, yeah. so it's, uh, so that's the plan for the arch. And then we finish the stone and, Go home. <laughs> call, call, it, call, it, call it at the end of the day. Go yeah. see your family, huh? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> labor Day has always been a kind of a, a good day of labor for me. So. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty typical. Okay, we've come down to the final moment of getting the masonry heater 100%. Well, 100% what he's doing complete. We still gotta have a company do the rest of the pipe. Yeah, yeah. So let's, what we got going on now? Well, we're gonna put the caps on and that's it for our part. Yep. Um, we got a couple more things we wanna show you. We forgot okay. a couple things. Yep. Uh, you so wanna show them now or after we yeah, do Yeah, why that? don't we do it now? That's fine. Okay. So, two things. So, the manual was Waterlogged when we got here, <laughs> so we didn't have a manual. Yeah. So I was kind of going off of memory for all of this. So, um, so two things I forgot. Um, one was, remember when we put all of the insulation around mm -hmm. these three sides? We put it on the bottom. Yep. We also wanted to put it fit vertical right in here. Okay. So it'd be right against this piece, and so the door press up against that as well. Okay. So we want a full seal, or else when the air comes in. It's gonna come up through here. And not through where you want it to. And not through. through here where we want it to. Okay. And so that's, uh, so we're gonna put that in there now. And it's, it's, it's an easy thing to just tuck in at okay. this point too. Yep. So if there's plenty of space in there to do that. And then the other thing is in here, um, when we built this, we built it up about two and a half inches. And that created a little air gap. You may or may not remember what yeah, that remember. looks like, but the part number, I forget what's part number six is that little face piece that yeah. slides down in there. So there's an air gap underneath of that. Same problem, air will come in 
and go up and then come up through the grate and we okay. don't want that it's inefficient so we're going to stick a brick in there and fill that up so that that's plugged up we're going to insulate this and then that's all done awesome so oh there was one other thing too on the oh, sides oh that's right <coughs> so the final final the final piece, final the final piece for these plugs other than putting the door on there is we're going to cut a fire brick in half and we're just going to stick it in there as a plug and i'm going to just take a little bit of silicone and we're going to glue on just a little insulation pad as well and the reason for that is that when the flue gases are traveling through there's a lot of moisture um, even when you have dry wood call it 20 percent moisture content yeah 50 pounds of wood has 10 pounds of water wow that's more than a gallon of water it's almost a gallon and a quart yeah and so when you think of all that moisture coming through and it's warm and the steel on that door is going to be cold it can condensate on that steel and start to drip this black watery fluid and kind of ruin the face of yeah, the you don't want that. so when you put when you block that with a brick um, or a gasket or something else this isn't cold in the same way and even if it does form a little condensate it's going to keep it in here until it can evaporate back that's out. good yeah yeah so all that's right. good. Okay. So what are we gonna do first? Let's cap. All right. All right. All right. So we'll set the camera up and show you putting this cap up there, and then uh, we'll show you the rest of it. And uh, Patrick's gonna go back to Minnesota. That's right. <laughs> all four of these going up there, Patrick. Yeah. So all four of these are going up there, and you're using the. Were you gonna use the mortar to set it on top of? You know, the reality is the cap don't have to be there. Okay. So, oh, so you can just set it up there. You could literally set it up dry. Okay. And that makes sense. So we're gonna just do a little bit of mortar and it's just really for decorative sake. Okay. Cap is nice to be able to pull off if you ever have to do some sure. kind of repair. So I wouldn't recommend really hard capping it down. Okay. Because if you want to take a look up there now to see what that looked like when it yep. dried up, it's Same. not a bad idea. Just to kind of see how that looks. You know, this, oh, is, yeah. this is not, uh, you know, it's just mortar. Yeah. It's not like there's rebar in there or it's not super thick. It's just a couple inches thick of mortar. All that could come out relatively yeah. easy if you had some reason why something broke. Yeah. You know, or you know, if uh, somebody's burning wet wood and you had steam build up and you cracked a piece. Yeah. Or, you know, just all of that. So it's good to be able to get into the top of a heater. You've got yeah, a super tall to. healing ceiling yeah. here, so that makes it pretty handy. Don't it, it makes it really handy. So most people never have to do this kind of repair, but it's just one of those things. Or if you ever did. If you ever did, it's a lot easier than having to tear something apart. Okay. You need help lifting these. No, I'll be okay. You got them? Yeah, I got them. Okay. Did you go? Well, these tall stones do help. Yeah, they that. help a lot. You want me to do what you want to do? No, you don't have to go. Don't have to go. I don't have to go. Tell me. Okay. I just want you to kind of grab onto the inside seam there. Right here? Yep. Yep. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is how I would do this if I forgot. Okay. Is I would push this in okay. almost all the way, kind of roll it over, and then apply the silicone. Yeah. Because otherwise, silicone just makes such a mess. 
to like smear it, you know? Yeah. And you want it there just to kind of hold it in place. It doesn't, it's not necessary for any other thing except making sure that during the expansion and the contraction that okay. nothing moves that shouldn't move. Pull these off. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Done. Those are there. That back. <laughs> that one. I've done that before. <laughs> Day one. Day one. All right. I'm gonna cut two of these in half for our cleanup course. Just over on the on the side. Okay. Twice. Cause a little bit of a. Um, you want the flue gases to hit it yeah. rather than that metal door. Um, it's two and a half inches. It's a four inch deep uh, oh, okay. door, so it's gonna sit back in there, you know, about an inch, inch and a half, something like that. You know, yeah. and then we're gonna glue on just a, just to be overly cautious. I just, I like to glue on just a little piece of ceramic okay. wall. It doesn't hang in there very long as far as like durability, putting yeah. things in and out. You only do it once a year. Yeah. So it's it's just helpful. And you don't have to glue it on either, you can just kind of stuff it in yeah. there and, and it's good to go. So I'm gonna cut those quick. Okay, so I think this is day six of four, supposed to be four. Um, so we talked about it probably in this video. The stone gave us so much problem, wrong product, whatever. We, we fought through it. Patrick fought through it, and we're finally complete with the, um, his part of the masonry heater. Um, I'm going to let him close this video out. He could tell, he, you tell him about your company and how they can contact you yep. and, and all that. And if you want to, talk about the do-it-yourself part yep, in this yep. video. Oh, sure. yep. Okay, so here you go. Thanks for tuning in all this time. Um, it's been quite a project. We had our, our struggles with the stone for sure, and the bench took a little bit longer as we expected to. We had hoped to have two days to do the stone when the boys were here, and that just didn't work out. So, <clears throat> but uh, other than that, I think it went off very well. We didn't hit the four day mark like we were thinking. Yeah. But, but, um, but what we manufacture, what we do as Tempcast, is we manufacture the core kit. We believe that that core kit is definitely a, a do it yourself or Thing. Absolutely. Um, for most people that would maybe define themselves as a do-it-yourselfer. Um, it's not a do-it-yourself project like wallpaper, but it's a do-it-yourself project like a good construction project. Um, pieces are heavy, but, but doable with two people. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but the rest of it, at this point in time, you're, I, we do have people every year. I've got, I'm talking to a guy right now from Michigan that just bought one and he's never built one of these before and he's gonna to try to do all the masonry and even a bench himself. He's just, That's I'm, awesome. I'm just working with him on it. Hey, so now you can refer him to these videos with the bench. <laughs> oh and... yeah, I did actually. He contacted me a couple of days ago before the bench one came out. That's and, awesome. Um, so he's he's looking and uh, so anyway, we, we have people that do everything. So it just depends on where you're at. Like yeah. for some people, 
they look at the whole thing and the whole thing just seems like no way that is yeah, not too a big of a project. project. Too big, yep. And totally understandable. And other people, they see what we did here and they're like, I got this, I can do this. And so it really depends on where you're at. But uh, we think that it's, we want it, the whole thing to be a do-it-yourself project. I mean, right now the core, I think is, because it's just Lego blocks and numbers yeah. and caulking. Mm -hmm. And if we can make the whole thing like that, uh, well, that's in the future, but yeah. And you said if, if people will dry stack it first, it gives them a whole different aspect. You do, yeah. You want to dry stack it first. If you've never done one before, dry stacking it first just really, it just. The only difference is now you're adding mortar, and you realize that this is really simple. Yep. Yep. It's intimidating from kind of the the, the get go, but it's it's uh, it's not so bad once you once you've got it and yep. done that. Yep. So. Um, yeah, how do they how do they contact you if they want to order one of these? Yeah. So, the best way to get a hold of us is tempcast.com that's got all of our information pricing um, the whole installation manual that we didn't have here uh, is online and also a planning guide planning guide you can download both of those planning guides really helpful just for just planning yeah where to put it how to put it where are the clearances what are codes what are the footings look like what are the dimensions for the layouts and what are the different layouts what are the different options yep. so uh, that's a great resource on our website um, our, ad, our, webs, our email address is staywarm at tempcast.com if you just want to email like me direct, directly. And uh, that's the best way to get a hold of us. My phone number is on there as well if you want to okay. call. So Awesome. So I'll put everything up on the screen in the description box and in, in the comment. You guys can check out tempcast.com. Check out uh, Patrick's work on his website. This is your best one you've ever done, Patrick. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is amazing. We can't thank you enough, huh, Brandy? Yes. Isn't that Appreciate awesome? It. Yep. Even Gabby says, thank you. Yeah, she's going to love it. The, the animals do. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be laying. You said the, war the the floor even will stay warm in a certain radius. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll have a warm floor for quite a radius around it. It just, because ra it's a radiant heater, it just, it directly heats objects. Yep. And so, um, yeah, it's it's fun. It will it will warm up the walls. It will warm up everything that you touch. It's um, amazing. You know, if you have granite countertops, they won't be like stone cold in yeah. the winter time. And That's so cool. So it's it's as long as it can see it, it warms it. So you guys have a YouTube channel too. We talked about it on a live stream. That's right. What is it? Uh, Tempcast. dot com. Is it Tem Tempcast? It's just Tempcast. Isn't Tempcast. It? Yeah, just Tempcast Masonry Heaters. Yeah. Yes. Tempcast Masonry, Masonry Heaters. Heaters. That's right. We'll need to put a link to that yeah. too in the. That'd in be bio. better because I'm not so savvy with the whole <laughs> media stuff. You'll get you'll get used to it. <laughs> so you guys go over to their um, YouTube channel, subscribe to it. You guys are up. I think they're close to 500 subscribers now. They're going to start posting more videos over there. Um, but go over there and tell them that I sent you over there, and you guys. If you got any questions, you could probably leave comments and he might be able to um, get to him eventually. But email him, um, like he said. And if you're interested in this, um, he's got his phone number and all that stuff on, on our website. YouTube station. We're going to be doing a heater. Uh, with, it'll start the next couple of weeks here. Okay, so you'll be filming that. And, and that'll be a good one for a lot of people that are thinking about a retrofit because this one's basically going into a closet. We're going to take a closet out. We have to, we have to cut open a concrete floor, pour the foundation, build, oh, wow. build the foundation, pour the slab. You know, we got to do some framing. We got to, and we're going to build the whole heater. It's going to be a good and, one. And so it's a good one start to finish as yep. well. And, and it includes some of the things that we didn't have to do here, like the whole foundation. Yeah, so, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. So, like you said, sorry if I, I might cut you out, but yeah, go check that out too. They'll be having that up in a few weeks. And um, yeah, that's all we got for you in this video. We'll have one more video coming out, a time lapse um, of this whole thing, probably within like it'll be like a 10 minute time lapse, but it was over a six day period. It's yes. going to be it's going to be yeah. so cool. Yeah. Um, so. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this series and stick, stay tuned because we're going to be doing a lot of cooking and stuff like that in yep. this. So, you know, what's interesting too, if I could just yeah. one more thing, come on, you know, as far as a masonry heater goes, it's expensive. There's no doubt about it, but you know, I look at it like, so is a car and why do people spend a lot of money on a car? Mm -hmm. It's because it's kind of a place where they can kind of be alone. It's, it's clean, it's neat, whatever they, it's a little bit, people spend more money than they have to on a yeah. car, right? If it was sure. all about heat and keys, we, we could all buy a real cheap car. But when you buy a masonry heater, it's, you kind of, if you use it, you're really getting a, a, a lifestyle change. Uh, life starts to revolve very differently. You, you just get used to the rhythm of a fire in the morning and a fire at night, and you get used to cooking with it. Um, you just start thinking about ways to use it. You start thinking about making your own bread, and and you spend more time as a family together doing that kind yeah. of a thing because making bread's kind of a fun project, and oh, most sure. people don't even know how to make a bread, you know, let alone start trying like artisan breads in the pizza oven or or artisan pizzas or, and then 
life just kind of starts to revolve there. And instead of turning on the TV so much, you enjoy sitting around the fire. Yeah. And this seems like for me, my experience, the, the TV has kind of robbed a lot of homes of the, the hearth that used to be there in the yeah. winter time, the warm glowing thing that everybody sat around. And hey, as they're watching this on their TV. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, they're yeah, fun. But it's, uh, it's it's a it's a different lifestyle. It, pr it produces a lot of leisure. And, I can't wait. And they're they're beautiful. Um, it's a fireplace. Um, yeah. So it's there. It really is a it's a it's a great thing for a home. It's a it's when people walk in. That's the first thing they're drawn to. They see. They're gonna ask questions oh, yeah. about it. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah. So. Well, um, now I'm already thinking. As I'm thinking about decorating the house, it's all going to be based on that. Yeah. Now I'm like, I don't know. This is like the focal point. Yeah. I'll have to design. Right. Right. This right. makes the whole house. It does, and and you you realize that it just there's hardly a a nicer thing you're going to put oh, into yeah. a home. I'm the refrigerator. For most what? people, I mean, it's like to put this in your home. I mean, what are you going to do to one up this? You yeah. Know, no, I mean granite countertops just aren't going to no. do it. You know, it's so so yeah, you do it. It just seems like life starts to revolve around this and that produces a lot of leisure and like a good kind of work splitting wood is kind of a yep. good kind of work making food is it and everybody gets involved um and then even when you're just sitting there enjoying the fire it's just that's where everybody is if you have kids it's just like everybody just just yep. comes around and sits and if you talk you talk and if you don't you don't but the point <laughs> is you're you're kind of hanging you're out there. together you you're know there. and that's it's really cool so, we can't wait yeah well we can't thank you enough patrick you're very welcome and thanks for watching everybody yep